Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to our virtual session today titled for Crying Out Cloud with Colin McArdle, our Account Director here at Ticket and Mike Kay, our Senior Solutions Consultant. Uh, just so you are aware, the recording of this session will be sent to you uh, with the email you registered with uh, tomorrow morning. So uh, over to you, Colin. Thanks very much, Megan, and thank you very, everyone for joining. Um, so for crying out cloud, we're covering today why now is the right time to invest in a cloud DMS or EMS, depending on how you refer to it, but it's basically <clears throat> a document management system or electronic content management system. <clears throat> so the agenda today, we're going to be covering just a few things. Um, we will have enough time for questions at the end and throughout if there's anything of particular interest that uh, you uh, want to find out a little bit more about as we go through, but we'll cover off what is the new normal, the evolution of document management systems, the new workplace landscape, a selection checklist that you really should be considering when thinking of moving to a cloud DMS, uh, cloud versus on-prem, have a, a summary at the end, summary just to wrap up and then any questions at the end. <clears throat> so the new normal, obviously we're working in a very different situation than we were three months ago and the question you know that we pose to you is how easily can you access your work files whilst working from home uh, we find that using a vpn to access an on-premise document management system can be challenging it also increases security risks and potentially depending on the quality of that vpn and indeed even your home broadband connection you know there's time that's potentially being lost on technical issues Although it's been difficult, adjustment to the new working environment has been admirable across the professional services industry and indeed, you know, across any industry. However, creating that temporary fix will not always hold in the long term. You know, so really, we, we are raising the question for more flexible working in the future. Accountancy firms need to consider investing in more cloud technology to adapt to this new normal. So looking back, really, what was the first generation DMS? Well, here on the left, we have um, what is potentially a partner of an accountancy firm and, you know, the uh, poor PA, but uh, looking at a structure, a filing cabinet with paper documents. We move over to the mid 1950s, where we really had the first sort of work computers, Daisy and Gert, that were launched in the US and how things have changed. But really, that, that first generation D, DMS, what, what, we've, what that replaced was the directory structure that you potentially had. You were able to profile documents. There were efficiencies in be able, being, able to, being able to locate those documents and indeed with advanced searching capabilities. It did help maintain the IT process when they came along, but it also introduced some auditing of documents and improved version really how has thing how have things changed well in the last two years you know studies have shown that 90 percent of the data has been created that we work with today up until a few months ago and i realized that's a few months ago there were up to four times as many people working from home that's potentially now 100 percent give or take a few exceptions there's been an exponential increase of data flowing into and out of your organization and 85% of firms and individuals report that IT is not necessarily meeting their business demands fully. And that was actually a report from Gartner, which, which stated that the digital transformation is a business strategy that enables new ways of working. And I think we've all experienced that over the past uh, two to three months. So where once we were happy to receive approximately 20 emails a day, um, I think that's now a bit of a pipe dream uh, where we wish we could only receive 20 emails a day, but we're now looking for other applications to reduce email volume. We never left the office because the phone was there, but now we actually, we actually separate the work process from the location that we're doing the work. The security policy, if there was any, was lock your office, shut the door, shut the filing cabinets, but now we share the minimum amount of data necessary to complete the job or task. Uh, change occurred slowly with time to adapt, but especially now, you know, that dynamic change that has been forced upon us 
uh, for want of a better word, requires agility and the ability to respond. Analytics was a report that the accounting that the accounts department printed, but now business requires real time analytics and reports. So what does the new digital workspace look like? From a core user experience, it's the complete digital file. That's all of the documents, all of the emails and ancillary pieces of information. And today that is still an issue for a number of firms having one true client digital file. It has to be persistent and consistent. You know, we, we need to be able to access the same workspaces wherever we go. Security is, is, remains persistent and we want the same user experience. It's that uh, available where you are, not where the office is. And that's particularly important, you know, in the situation that, that we find ourselves. But it's also able to connect to other tools and services that, that you need on a one open platform. For example, you know, your time and billing, time capture, or any research that you may need to do. So when selecting a DMS in the new era, what really are the key components that you need to look for? Well, security and compliance is one. You know, you need to be able to show that to your clients that your files that and the data that you hold for them is secure and safe. You need to be able to collaborate both internally with colleagues and externally with clients or external parties. Usability and integration is absolutely key. Accessibility, which we said was that being able to access anywhere. The system needs to be scalable and have a level of information governance that is a, that suits the needs of your firm, but indeed actually suits the needs of your clients. So when we talk about cloud versus on-prem or versus hosted, what really should you be looking for? Well, in these modern computing models, really you want to be looking here on the right-hand side of a multi-tenanted uh, single instance across the world system, which is basically one puppy to love. You know, whereas the on-prem models and the hosted models, you've got separate instances of the document management per firm, which then also uh, leads to, you know, ongoing costs for upgrades and maintenance. You really need to be looking at a cloud multi-tenanted model, which you will get all of the benefits, all of the enhancements automatically pushed to you in that software as a service model or SaaS model. Security is also important. You know, over the last couple of years, there have been, you know, quite a few instances, and we've just called out a couple here where, you know, firms have been hit by cyber attacks. You know, in Deloitte, that was a couple of years ago where hackers may have accessed usernames, passwords, personal details of a firm's clients. And then again, here, you know, just a couple of years ago, you know, an accounting hacker firm in the US where kept clients offline and in the dark. You really want to be looking at a system that can provide against um, any hacks, um, you know, externally or indeed any data leaks within your own firm. You also want to be looking, you know, at a document management system that will provide you with all these accreditations that you can automatically inherit as part of a multi-tenanted system which means, you know, as users of a particular system, you will, as I said, inherit all of these classifications and third party attestations um, as, as a user of those uh, multi-tenanted platforms, which also includes, you know, unique encryption per document and really looking at a system that's got military grade accreditation in terms of encryption. Collaboration is also another major part. Um, we collaborate internally, we collaborate with our clients. That needs to be really at the heart of any document management system where you can easily share your documents, you can uh, uh, work with team members, that there is actually that trust inherent and even when collaborating, that there's that ability to exchange securely and safely that, you know, at times very sensitive uh, documentation that really is that your clients are trusting you with.
In terms of collaboration, really, what do we mean by that? We actually, we mean we're working together with our clients, with uh, our internal colleagues to eliminate clutter. That ability to share documents or client spaces securely inside and outside of your organization. You can control that access and the distribution of those, but as well, you're actually potentially cutting down on the amount of email that's coming in from your clients and you're being able to engage in a real time uh, secure manner, you know, on engagements or project centric uh, uh, matters, which removes that clutter, the risk of emails and attachments leaving your organization because once they move outside of your organization, you've sort of lost control as to what happens with those documents in the future. And then, as I said, you know, that ability to have that inbuilt integration with all of the other standard business tools that you are using. With all of those said, usability is absolutely key. And the ability to integrate with your other systems, you know, you need to have a a system that's got you know a, a first class web design it's simple to use it's common sense and then you've got that usability in the middle you need to be choosing a document management system that your staff and indeed your clients will be happy to use but when we look at usability what does that mean you know for some of our document management systems that are out there in the market you know really the most uh, successful in terms of that end user adoption are ones in which users can personalize their experience, whether that's through real time uh, chat communications, that sort of instant message type feature, cutting down potentially the amount of email internally and externally with your clients, that ability to uh, uh, access the document management system, your documents and your emails and client files, you know, through a browser has got really tight integration with Microsoft Office, be that Word, Excel, PowerPoint, et cetera, on any device, whether that's you know, an iPhone, an iPad, or an Android device. You want to be able to have a system that allows you to easily um, file your incoming and outgoing emails that you're sending to clients and indeed internally to, to, to colleagues. One that makes a prediction by looking at, you know, the uh, the sender of the email, the other recipients on that email, the title of that email, what are the attachments, have they got any names, and being able to use that information, analyze that, and make a prediction on where similar emails with those properties have been filed within your organization. You're wanting something that's, you know, got a really tight integration with um, Microsoft Office 365. And indeed, you want also the ability to work from your desktop as well. Um, so that means so that for those individuals that are used to saving files, let's say, in a network file type of structure, allowing them to work in that same way, but having those folders linked um, to the relevant uh, workspaces or document repositories within your document management system, having that two-way sync, but also that allows for offline working as well. So that individuals, you know, um, should they be away from the office or, you know, have a poor network connection, whether they're on, you know, flights, trains, et cetera. I know that may not be completely relevant today, but it will be again in the future, we all know. It's being able to access those documents whilst you're offline, being able to do that work and allowing those documents and emails to sync back up to your document management system once you get a network connection again or indeed an internet connection. All of these aspects, you know, result in, you know, a high end user adoption. Um, and that's really what you want to be looking for. You do not want to be making a large investment in a system that your users just simply aren't going to use. It also helps with any change management that may need to go on within your businesses uh, as you implement this new document management system. Digging in a little bit more into that usability and integration, as I said, it's, you, the important features of a DMS is the ability to store uh, various document types 
you know, the Microsoft Office Stack, PDFs, documents that have been OCR'd and emails, and being able to save those easily and quickly. Being able to integrate with other core Office applications, such as Office 365, any financial systems that you may have, or indeed any CRM systems that you may have that hold your client records or client contact details. The ability to have a powerful keyword search or a Google type search, and then the ability to actually um, drill down into those search results to quickly and easily find those documents that you're looking for. That predictive email filing that I touched upon a moment ago, where those predictions are made for you or um, in, uh, in line with the uh, types, similar types of documents with uh, various metadata, metadata tagging uh, within your system. You also want the ability to have monitoring tools to see which users are accessing which documents. Also, of course, one of the most important aspects of um, a document management system is simple version control that tracks and edits documents and to recover older versions of documents should you need to revert back to those. But you also need to have you know, you know, a system that controls and regulates you know, when outdated documents can be deleted. So just to help you, you know, to, uh, in terms uh, of adherence to any retention policies that you have, any information governance policies that you have, or indeed any GDPR policies um, that you have to adhere to with regard to your client files. So when we talk about cloud computing, you know, one of the key aspects of which is absolutely vital today, which we're all possibly suffering from is that accessibility, being able to easily access your documents regardless of where you are. So it's having that seamless, secure access to your documents from any location, you know, not having to be in the office anymore, which I know the overwhelming majority of us are not. Um, but to have a persistent and consistent user experience across your firm with that flexibility though for the end user in allowing them to work in the way that they want to work. It needs to be device agnostic, so accessible from any device, whether that's a laptop, whether that's a desktop computer, whether that's on a mobile phone, an iPad or tablet. But also that accessibility can remove some of the burden upon your IT teams from the equation. You know, you can set up portals yourselves, you can, you can share documents yourselves easily, internally and externally, and collaborate. But it's also actually in terms of that multi-tenanted cloud, you know, removing the ongoing um, overhead or burden on IT to make sure that your systems are up to date and on the latest version. In terms of scalability, you want to be looking at a system that's relevant to small firms as well as large firms. You know, those, that multi-tenant environment that can have a single user right up to an organization of 15,000 users, as an example. But also when we talk about scalability, we mean to the, the ability that the, the platform is able to handle growing or diminishing resources to meet your business needs. So that ability to be flexible in terms of increasing staff numbers and decreasing staff numbers. High availability, which is obviously something that's absolutely vital. You know, the way that some systems are in the cloud work is they have got, um, a uh, technology called Erasure Coding, which will split your documents into multiple pieces, um, allowing you to access any of them should one of those data centers actually become unavailable. You still have access to all of your documents all of the time. Characteristics of this scalability is really having that broad network access if you're, you know, internally, being able to have a multi-tenant environment which can uh, look after that um, computing power, let's say, or server power, they can increase and decrease as, as demanded by, you know, you as users, that rapid scalability and having that measured service as well, which is absolutely key to ensure that a platform is responding to your business needs without you having to worry about involving IT um, or 
investing further uh, from your business. In terms of governance, trust is absolutely vital. The trust that your clients put in you to handle their data, to store their data securely. In terms of governance, what we're talking about is industry-leading security technology, erasure coding, which I touched upon, that ability to split your documents um, and you know, into, for example, 24 pieces, but only across three data centers, but all, only needing 14 pieces of that uh, 14 pieces of that document to fully compile the document again, meaning that one data center can go down. Um, but you will not see any uh, decrease in availability or speed to access the, your document. Having also then having dual custody encryption where you know uh, the multi-tenant platform will hold one of the keys and you hold the other encryption key. And then unique cipher keys and encryption keys across all of your documents. There are systems out there that will provide that military grade encryption. And why that is important is that you can say to your clients, your data, your documents is safe with us. You also need to be able to control and monitor the end using user activity, being able to restrict users from access or sharing data that they should not have access to. So that open versus post pessimistic security model having ethical walls in place that is linked to your finance system that only the relevant individuals can see that that data that, that they are entitled to, but also system that has uh, data loss prevention technology within it. When you talk about data loss prevention, what we mean there is um, internally to either stop the naive, malicious, or careless user um, that they are not sending out documents or you know to an incorrect email address that you know when certain documents can only be sent to a certain domain um let's say it can be sent to anybody with the domain that is at ticket.com apart from that it cannot be sent the, the ability to restrict what people can do uh, either that's you know you can disable the print function you can disable them sharing outside of of the organization sending it to an external email address etc etc but you also need to be looking at a system which can enforce uh, information governance best practices such as segregation of duties remove you know being able to disable a uh, removable media so for example not allowing people to save documents onto a the USB sticker key, but all the, all throughout, you know, having that audit trail log of every single action that has been taken on that document, whether that's been opening the document, editing the document, saving the document, forwarding the document, emailing it, uh, updating it and saving it as a new version. All of the above is, you know, a fantastic approach to address data security at your firm. But you're also addressing you know the uh, security um but also the ability to address security audits that your clients may impose on you some systems also uh, provide uh, an audit and compliance service which you can pass on to them and they will complete any audit or compliance surveys which your clients send to you on your behalf so in summary when selecting a dms you know, you want one that ticks all of the boxes for security requirements, technology, operational and governance. One that it is easy to collaborate, where collaboration is the new normal. And that's the ability to easily collaborate internally and externally with your clients and ensuring that those documents never leave your platform. They all reside there and you can invite both individuals and external parties into uh, those particular uh, document repositories. You want to be looking uh, for a system where adoption rates are incredibly high. You know, you want to select a DMS vendor that provides high accessibility and ease of use, and most importantly, a consistent and persistent experience. Then when looking at a cloud, you know, selecting a cloud uh, solution, 
why cloud above all on-prem? It increases security, you know, it improves the business continuity. It's that elimination of infrastructure acquisition, acquisition and maintenance cost, and also that reduction on ongoing consultancy costs. So what we mean here is, I'm sure that there are people on the call today that have had issues having to work from home, getting in through their uh, firewalls, firewalls or VPN uh, connections into the workplace, purely because a lot of firms just simply were not geared up for the situation that we were into, and therefore losing important, you know, important potentially billable time, but as importantly, that ability to provide a timely service back to your clients. And finally, we do have a follow-up webinar on the 7th of July, where we would love to see um, everybody on this uh, webinar, uh, so that we can show you some of those features that have already been covered today. And I believe that Megan is posting that link into the chat function as we speak. So finally, to wrap up, and I did say that we would be quick, I think it took in 25 minutes. Um, are there any questions that anybody on the call would like to ask? And we will open up uh, the, the lines now where people can ask questions directly or indeed through the chat function uh, um, on, the, on the side panel, I think. I'm not saying the side panel because I'm in presentation mode, but if there are any questions, please let us know. Yeah, so thanks, Colin. Just to clarify that, any questions, can you please use the Q&A uh, message window on your, on your uh, screen so that we can then uh, see those come in and we will answer them accordingly. Um, there was one uh, that's just come in, which I can take, Colin, if you wish. It's, it's around assurances of um, jurisdictions and where data is actually stored. So um, obviously we've, we've been... Uh, discussing there the, the key benefits of, of what cloud technology offers. Um, but obviously moving away from that traditional on-premise model does mean that the data may not necessarily be physically stored in, on your infrastructure or, or within your offices itself. So um, Ticket, as you may or may not know, we are uh, one of the only and largest global partners of the Net Documents Cloud DMS, which is the, 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 the world's leading cloud document management system, full stop. Um, due to all of the reasons that Colin's described, but one of the key um, benefits that it offers is the ability to basically specify where exactly your data is stored. They have a number of data center uh, clusters all around the world uh, in various different jurisdictions, but you have um, data center cluster in North America, you have one in the UK, you have one in, in Central Europe, and you also have one out in the Asia Pacific um, side of the world. So you as a potential client of Net Documents will be able to ensure that your data resides in any of those that best suits your requirements. And Mike, there's also the ability with some additional uh, functionality that the Net Documents platform offers to have your data reside wherever you wish um, through use of the Microsoft uh, Azure data platform as well. So if you wanted to reside, uh, you know, outside of those four jurisdictions that Mike said, and you know, you wanted to have country specific, um, that is absolutely something that is possible uh, through the Net Documents platform. Absolutely. Um, okay, there's another question here. Is there a way to protect data from the United States, maybe housed in Canada? So absolutely in line with the, the previous question, um, that is absolutely possible. Um, if you're a Canadian based firm or you prefer your data to be housed in Canada, that is absolutely possible through um, the, the, the technology that we just described there. Through the Microsoft Azure stack is the simplest and easiest way for us to achieve this. Um, we can essentially ensure that all data stored within the Net Documents DMS system actually resides within Canada itself in one of the Microsoft Azure data center uh, clusters. So there is no way that the United States have any uh, jurisdiction to or access to that data, um, meaning that it is protected from the various uh, 
uh, subpoenas and, and, and laws that they have to potentially access it. Yeah, and indeed, with regard to the Patriot Act, there is um, a very well-known uh, US law firm that have offices all across the world. Um, their data actually resides within the UK, for instance, and that's possibly due to the Patriot Act, most likely, um, but that is entirely possible and absolutely possible. Absolutely. And that, that often then lends itself to a next question, which is more of a technical nature, but does that impact the speed and performance of a system like this if all of the data is potentially on the other side of the world? And again, that's where net documents have really um, stepped up and, and addressed that because they've got technology in place that just essentially means you don't physically experience any performance, any lag or any underlying access issues simply because your data is potentially stored air, uh, many, many miles away. So it's, uh, it's really, really a good system. Um, there, there was a comment coming as well, not so much a question, but it was a comment of agreeing with the uh, user adoption. So ensuring that people can work in the way that they want to work. And you saw on a previous slide there that Colin had um, about seven or eight different um, ways of essentially accessing um, a system like that. There we go, like, like we can see on screen here. And, and this is the key to the success of any system, not just document management, but any type of system. It's the end users are willing to use it and are happy to use it. And that means that it works in the way that they want to work. And, and this is testament to net documents. I think they have somewhere in a region of 98% uh, end user adoption rate, which uh, towers above anyone in its uh, competitors because they don't have this many, um, I guess, access points for the end user. If you work on a mobile device, you've got the applications here that are also integrated with various office apps, meaning you can not only access your documents, you can edit them, work on them, share them, and, and, and et cetera. Um, you've got that predictive email filing. So um, actually what they offer is one click filing. You can have an email or a bunch of emails that all need to be filed into the same engagement, uh, uh, same engagement file. Um, you can select them all, and Net, Net Documents essentially predicts where you need to file it based off based off the AI and intelligence it has off the, in the system, meaning that you can have 20, 30, 50 emails all in relation to a specific engagement. It will show you the most likely destination for that in its predictions, and it's one click to ensure that all of those emails get filed into the correct file itself. Um, there, there are so many ways, offline access. It, it's just reiterating the fact that the reason Net Documents is so good and has been so successful is that essentially, from a change management perspective, there is actually very little required because you will be able to work in the vast majority of cases in the way that you do today. Okay, don't seem um, to have any other no, questions. No, we don't seem to have. We'll possibly give it a minute unless, yep. you know, just to allow someone that, that eureka moment for if, if they have a question that's just come into their heads. Nope. Well, look, as, as I said to everyone, we really do thank you for joining us. Um, I'm just getting back down to that. That, you know the call to action to to join us on the 7th of, of July where we will be having um, you know a webinar where we will be demonstrating those features that we talked about um, earlier on in this session um, it'll be both myself and Mike again uh, if you can bear the the, uh, the sound of our voices and the looks of our faces um, on uh, on the 7th of July um, everyone obviously who has attended this session um, we will be contacting you with the details um, and encouraging you to join up and obviously that's just not open to yourselves if you want colleagues to join as well and you think that there would be value in that please do feel free uh, to pass on this link um, to any uh, interested parties within your organization um, there's been no more questions and answers or comments that have come through so um, 
with that, um, I will bid you a good afternoon or a good morning, and we will allow, allow you to continue on with your day and getting some time back. Um, but again, uh, we really do appreciate you taking the time to join us today. We hope you found it informative. And, you know, the last thing is just, you know, please do continue to stay well, stay safe. And uh, we hope to uh, see you again on the 7th. Many thanks. Thank you.